Hi, I'm Nikki from Little Ones, and today I'm going to be talking to Laura Fulani, who is a clinical psychologist from Melbourne, and she's the director of Your Mind Matters Psychology Services. She has a passion for working with clients who are struggling with starting a family and also helping parents adjust to life once they have a baby. I will link her uh, website and Facebook group below and also a couple of Facebook support groups that she runs in case you're interested. Today we're going to be talking about um, maternal and paternal mental health, about postnatal depression and anxiety, and most importantly, how sleep and sleep deprivation affects our mental and physical health as parents. Welcome, Laura. It's really good to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. So let's just kick this off um, with a really easy one. Can you just tell me about your own journey into motherhood? What did you find easy? What was challenging becoming a mother? Oh, so I became a mother about 11 months ago, and I can't believe I'm already planning his first mm. birthday. Uh, it took us a bit over a year to get through the first trimester and to have a healthy pregnancy. So we were just over the moon and we spent so long just focused on pregnancy that when bub actually came along it was a bit of a um, reality shock i knew it was going to be difficult um and i knew there was sleep deprivation involved i didn't really uh, get the full gamut of the <laughs> first kind of month how difficult it can be um what was easy though is how much I loved him. Um, I work with a lot of women suffering from postnatal depression and I know it can hit anyone. And so I did have in the back of my mind that, you know, I may have trouble bonding with him. I'm not immune. Um, You know, I may not just instantly fall in love with him like everyone tells you that you do. Um, That's actually not the case. A lot of women don't. So I was really grateful when he came along and all those emotions just came and I loved him. And so in the middle of the night when he's crying again for the fifth time Mm. because he wants milk, you know, you kind of go, oh, really? And then you just look at this tiny little perfect human and you just, it's all worth it. So uh, the sleep deprivation was really, really hard initially but loving him was really easy and kind of compensated for that um but i was also juggling a business so that was kind of tricky as well Mm, i reckon and so how did that um let's just talk about that initial tricky period at the start and that sleep deprivation because that's obviously something that every new parent goes through like nobody's immune to that either there's just no way around it You, you know it's it's foggy and messy and devastating and and you just have to it's like a rite of passage how did that affect your experience of motherhood like your your initial leap into motherhood it look it was really full-on I felt really overwhelmed there is so much to learn when you have a Mm. baby and then when you you know he kind of needed to feed every two three hours so let's say it was every three hours and it would take about 45 minutes and then by the time I fell asleep it was an hour so you're sleeping in these really small chunks of time and you wake up you know the next morning and you don't feel rested and everything is just harder Mm. it's harder to do the dishes it's harder to um you know do the washing it's harder to cook and feed yourself everything is just harder and more stressful and there's also so much to learn and your baby's doing all these things and you're wondering is this normal is this not normal so there was a lot of self-doubt um as well there was a lot of guilt if I felt that I wasn't doing something that I should have been doing. So it was a big, big adjustment. Even though I work with a lot of parents and I did a lot of research, it was still all new to me. What you expect and the actuality of it um, is so different. And at the start, you do lose literally hours um, per night because Bob needs you. Yeah. So you obviously work in mental health so, um, and, and, and do a lot of work with mothers as well. Do you see a, a strong link between continued sleep deprivation and a decline in mental health and, and, and function and relationships and things like that with ongoing sleep deprivation? 
Absolutely. There is a plethora of research about sleep deprivation and um, depression in particular, but also Mm. some anxiety. So we know that if you are chronically sleep deprived, which they consider to be less than seven hours a night, um, and that goes on for a while, which is pretty normal for mothers uh, and fathers, um, because I'm sure anyone in the house kind of hears it, Uh, there's a tenfold risk of developing symptoms of depression. And we also know that people who do suffer from depression either report sleep loss or an excessive need to sleep. So there's a really, really strong link that's really well researched on depression and sleep deprivation. And sometimes they don't know which one actually comes first. So that's why when we see parents who are chronically sleep deprived, we are really mindful that there's a huge chance that there's a drop in mood, um, that they're going to feel really tired, that they're going to feel overwhelmed. And it's completely understandable. If you've had Mm. a night where you've had no sleep, baby or no baby, the feeling of being tired is really unpleasant. You can't think straight. Um, How you process things is a lot slower. We don't make as many good decisions. Our problem-solving ability goes out the window. And, of course, we just feel really um, heavy and low and unhappy. I don't know anyone who is tired and happy. I've never (laughs) had anyone like, how are you feeling? Like, I'm exhausted but happy. Yeah. I'm I'm exhausted. It's, It's tiring. Everybody can relate to that. And so do you see in your work specifically that that sleep deprivation on those levels is a contributing factor to postnatal depression or anxiety and those kind of maternal mental health issues that we see? Absolutely. So postnatal depression is really just depression that is due to having a baby. So it's not the baby blues that normally resolves within mm couple of days whereas personal depression it's about a month after Bobby's here it's lasting for a couple of weeks and we're also seeing that chronic sleep deprivation if it kind of transitions into personal depression um, which is really common it's about one in seven um, women who give birth get personal depression Um, they have trouble bonding with their baby it's not just I'm tired it's I feel like a bad mother I'm struggling Mm. to bond I'm feeling angry. I'm feeling overwhelmed. Um, There's lots of guilt involved. It's not just simply I'm tired. Mm. And so given the strong link between depression and anxiety and poor sleep, it's really not surprising that when we throw a baby in the mix and we get a surge of sleep deprivation that we also see increases in um, depression particularly amongst mothers and they're saying the research is about one in ten fathers as well will experience some low moods once a baby is introduced so if you've got two parents struggling of course that mm. also affects relationships which can exacerbate um, the difficulty within the household and the adjustment and it's a huge adjustment are you seeing that these sort of statistics are rising are more and more mothers experiencing these feelings of depression and anxiety, do you think? I don't know if the statistics are rising, but I know women are coming forward and reporting it a lot more. Mm. Uh, it's The maternal health nurses are doing a fantastic job at detecting when women are struggling. And it would be great if they were also working with the fathers a bit more mm. as well. Um, and so they're really good at detecting it and referring them to psychologists early. And it's no longer taboo for the generation of women who are having babies now to see a psychologist, it's fairly well accepted. And so we are having a lot more women put their hands up and say, hey, I'm struggling. Um, But they're often suffering in silence and it's only Mm. to the maternal health nurse or it's to their best friend or it's to another mother. Um, So we're trying to do a lot of awareness around Mm. that is really common and it responds really well to treatment. Postnatal depression um, is something that is really um, well managed Um, if you have a GP on board and a psychologist and you're willing to do the work and we are all about working with mums there is no shame in it it's a privilege to support um, women and fathers on their journey Um, and it's becoming more mainstream to see a psychologist so highly treatable really recommend that women get some support I do feel um, and I've talked to quite a few people who also feel that 
you know, these days we we do try and suck it up. We have that whole, I'm a woman, I should be able to do this. You know, it's just how hard can it be? It's seen as a failure to admit that we're not coping. Do you think that that then plays into increased feelings of depression and anxiety? We're sort of creating this cycle of putting pressure on ourselves and then mm-hmm. we can't, we, we don't feel like we're succeeding and then we feel like it's more of a failure to ask for help. How is that affecting our mental health? <laughs> yeah. So there is, a, obviously there's a huge movement now of women becoming, um, you know, the heads of companies mm. and really educated and entering in the workforce and becoming professionals. And it's really encouraged in today's society to multitask. Mm. It's not just... Um, you know, you're just taking care of the baby and that's it. Women these days and mothers um, or even stay-at-home dads, they're taking care of the baby, but they're also doing the shopping, the cleaning, the cooking, they're checking emails, answering phone. A lot of women are running their businesses from home Mm. and it's, there's, it's celebrated to be doing a million things Mm. and to say, how are you doing it? And they're like, Oh, I just don't sleep. Um, Or they're multitasking. They've got, and I have to admit, I am actually guilty of this um, because I do run a business in the early days. I would have my baby Bjorn on, bub strapped in. I've got a stand-up desk and I'd be responding to emails while bouncing him Mm. like this to keep him asleep and making phone calls and walking and walking just so I could get my work done. Even when I was in the hospital, I was, you know, got a baby two days old but I run a business and I had Mm. to respond to things. So there was a lot of pressure and um, I absolutely felt like a failure and that I couldn't do it all. And you know what? It was too much looking back now. um, And this is the unfortunate thing. We often look back on what we did and went, why did Mm. I do that? Why didn't I delegate? Why didn't I ask for help? Why didn't I put some boundaries in place? Mm. Uh, So I'm absolutely guilty of it. And I can completely relate to the pressure to, do everything and be everything and succeed and when you can't do it all that you feel like a failure even though it's such an unrealistic expectation yeah and then I yeah I agree we see it all the time actually you know parents who've just I need to do this and this and this and this and this and I'm not sleeping and I always sort of think that if you're not taking care of your nutrition and your sleep that underpins everything else like you can't do all of those things if you're not Mm -hmm. taking care of yourself as well and I think as mothers we forget that we are just as important as our child you know it's one thing it's one thing to keep them alive but we also have to keep ourselves alive and that doesn't mean like I'm a physical shell of my former self it means I'm healthy mentally and physically and I think sleep is such a big big thing Well, we're meant to spend two thirds, uh, sorry, a third of our life sleeping. So if Mm. we are messing with a third of our life, of course, the other two thirds are going to be impacted as well. And we find that with the chronic sleep deprivation, not only do we see the concentration difficulties and the tiredness and the irritability and the mood changes, but then it does start to affect our physical health. Chronic Mm. sleep deprivation is really associated. um, There's a strong link between um, depression, anxiety, Um, heart disease, uh, diabetes, stroke, obesity. Uh, So it really does long-term start to affect your physical health as well. And it takes more than just one good night's sleep to fix it. It's consistently taking care of yourself. Is it selfish to want better sleep for yourself when you have a baby? Mm -hmm. No, it is not. Oh, I can see how mothers think it's selfish. Mm. Um, and it's, again, it's this thing of the baby comes first, but you can't pour from an empty cup. So, yes, if you can survive a few nights with a little bit less sleep, take care of baby, fine. But then you need to take care of yourself as well. You need to say mm. to someone, hey, I need a good night's sleep. Just, just one good night's sleep can be, you know, a week can be all you need just to really feel rejuvenated and like yourself again. And your baby will survive. You will thank yourself for it because you'll be a new person the next mm. day. You'll be more alert. You'll have more energy. You'll be happier. And your baby is going to love that. So I would say that I know it's going to feel selfish because you're actually doing something for yourself which you're not used to when you're caring for a newborn. 
but you, you really need to do it. It's not self-indulgent. It's self-care. And, mm. and actually do that. a biological, pieces. biological necessity. You know? Yeah. I mean, how long can you go for without sleeping? Mm. You're, you're, you're not going to be the best version of yourself if you're not sleeping. 